Good morning and welcome to MarketCast 18 from a grey, murky Bournemouth uh, and the brightness of the F. Oliver offices therein. Do you like the shirt? Uh, the Love Hearts, uh, this is not just a matter of serendipity, you know, this was careful planning that ended up with me wearing a Valentine's Day shirt, albeit six days late. Originally, we'd planned that we were going to do this market cast a week earlier, hence the Valentine's shirt, but at least it reminds you uh, of all the good things that happened, well, hopefully happened for you on Valentine's Day. No time for this nonsense. We've got a lot to get through in the 30 minutes that we've got at our disposal this morning. And I wanted to start with a picture of a, an album that I've had in my collection since the 1970s. This one. I couldn't think, do you know, I love, I don't know whether you, the outlook out there is dreadful, isn't it? Everybody tells us so, how bad things are and how bad things are going to get. And yet somehow we watch as the data comes in and the stats come in and things start to improve. And I couldn't resist digging the old Super Tramp album from 1975. How many of you were born when that was released? Uh, I certainly was, I've got to tell you. Crisis, what crisis? It's a lovely piece of music too, if you get the chance to look it up. But the, my point being this, this is where we currently sit. We were, we've had reported to us that the last quarter recorded a drop of 0.3% in GDP. Uh, and after the adjusted, do you remember the last quarter the, in 2023, uh, sorry, the third quarter in 2023 was adjusted after the numbers were, were examined and dropped down to minus 0.1%, which means we've had two consecutive quarters of negative growth. And that formally and officially means we're in recession. But hey, guess what? The press have picked up a great term for this. It's not a recession. It's a shallow recession. Of course it's a shallow recession. And we know, don't we? All of you that are watching this that are in the industry up and down the country, we know how things are and we know that things are improving much in line, if you don't mind me saying so, in the way that we said that they would when we did the market cast back last autumn. This market is performing exactly as we predicted and building up to this spring bounce. It's going to surprise you that I have slightly adjusted my 2024 forecast, not in terms of the overall result, but in the way that that actually pans out through this year, because I've seen a lot better data than I expected earlier in the year. But again, I'm jumping ahead of myself. We've got things that we need to talk about first. Right Move's annual numbers came out yesterday. Have you seen those yet? Well, Right Move have now taken up in asking prices, don't forget, very, very different from sold prices, but in asking price, Right Move have taken us into positive growth for the first time since uh, last July, I think, seven months ago. Yeah, I've even featured in this market cast this morning with my love hearts on my shirt, a few charts out of the last RICS report. I couldn't resist it. It's a long time since I've seen any RICS survey results in positive territory. And it would have been a, a dreadful thing and an oversight if I hadn't included them in this this morning. Consumer confidence is a big deal. We finally touched neutral in terms of the consumer's belief on how their own personal finances are going to fare over the next 12 months. All of that to come, but if I could encapsulate it in one saying, I go back to that iconic Supertramp album, Crisis, what crisis? I have just as a little rider here, snipped this out. It wasn't even, this was the January Zoopla uh, uh, market report. And I've snipped that out, a comment by Richard Donnell, a very sensible man and invariably close to being right with the way he sees the market panning out. Don't get carried away. It is still a buyer's market and it absolutely is a buyer's market. But the narrative has changed. I grabbed a story of Sky News. This was published, this was first published back last December. And if you actually have a look at what Sky News were saying back then, Mortgage lending is going to fall in 2024. Uh, more households are going to move into arrears. 
uh, a, a bank body warns. And I think that was Finance England or something like that, GB Finance or whatever, the UK Finance, sorry, uh, have warned that mortgage lending would fall this year. That looks almost certain that that isn't going to happen. If we leap forward to yesterday, <laughs> is the intermediary who are actually very, very reliable with their reporting of the financial markets. UK mortgage lending is set to increase as economic outlook improves. You couldn't make it up, could you? So that narrative is changing all the time. And have a look how the consumer and the trade press. I mean, I know I've only grabbed a couple of stories here, two important stories, mine, but I've just grabbed a couple of stories here just to try and give you a sense of how the narrative in the press is changing. This one over here, and I know it's too small for you to read on your screens, especially if you're watching this on your mobile phone as you are struggling, strap hanging on the central line on your way into town. Uh, so let me help you. Basically what it's saying here, there's an economist. I don't know which one. Yeah, you could honestly, you could list them all, couldn't you? Um, but there's some economist who apparently is quite a revered and well thought about sort of chap who reckons that because our wage inflation is running ahead of general inflation, that simple uh, equation, if you like, is actually going to pull us out of the recession earlier than first thought. I'm going to come back with a lovely little chart on. I had a look at that. I read this story. I thought that's a really good story. So people, although they don't realize it, are actually getting better off currently. And don't forget, all, most voices, economists out there at the moment, reckon that inflation is probably going to drop down to 2% by April. So uh, if that happens, well, then happy days. And at the moment, we've got uh, wage inflation up still, although it's falling, still at around 6%. So that's going to have a significant effect on the economy. And in the meantime, if we actually look at the trade here, this was a Hampton story on Valentine's Day. See the show? I told you it's all about planning, isn't it? These things are all about planning. And Hamptons were saying that falling rates, falling interest rates, and in my view, I think it's much more about steadying interest rates because interest rates have actually stopped falling over the last two MPC uh, meetings. Uh, we'll talk about MPC shortly, but falling rates are boosted by a demand. And they've said that 48% of the properties sold in December of last year were subject to a price reduction. And that's come down from 55%. That is also the lowest number. Uh, it's the lowest number in any January, sorry, uh, in the last 10 years. And that includes January 2021 and January 2022. The sweet spot, as far as Hamptons are concerned in the market, sits there in between that 250 and 500K. And we know, and you regular market cast viewers will know, as I showed you on the right move numbers last month, that it's those properties up in the top, those million pound plus properties that have actually taken uh, they're probably the hardest hit in terms of volume uh, and price adjustments. Foxton's weighed in as well uh, a couple of weeks ago, saying that they are 40, there's a 46, 46, a Freudian slip, 46% increase in buyers versus this time last year. That is a huge uplift. And I know that the developers are feeling this too. And of course, it's an election year. So there is every likelihood that there is going to be an election bribe. And the press just loves speculating about what that election bribe might be. There's a, there are calls from apparently calls from a third of the industry at the moment asking for the restoration of help to buy. Well, you've got one third calling for them. You've got another third saying nothing either way. And then you've got a third saying this is madness. It just it drives demand and it feeds the developers and it doesn't help supply. And so that that row is set to rumble. Mm, I, I have my doubts, I must say. I think probably if there is going to be an election bribe, it's more likely to, to be stamp duty rather than help to buy. We'll see. But all of that stuff and all of those press details and stories, both in the in the consumer press and the trade press, have brought us to this pass. Regular market cast viewers will know that I set a huge amount of store by the GFK Consumer Confidence Barometer. It's so important in terms of looking forward and how the market's going to move. And it's a big month for us this month because for the first time 
since May 2021, we're talking almost three years ago now, the consumers believe that their own personal finances, are they gonna get better or worse? Well, that has reached neutral. That has reached neutral. So of the 2,000 people that got surveyed, half have probably said better and half have probably said worse. Well, unless they all said about the same. Um, and that's brought us back to neutral on that measure from a really the low point was after the uh, Trust Quateng mini budget back in September 2022. And look, this is, where, this is where we've got to now in neutral. All the other measures, the red line here, uh, the general overall index score continues to improve. It's still in negative. It's still in negative, but continues to improve. The green line, whether in the next 12 months is a good or a bad time to make a major purchase, white goods, a car and so on. And you can see that again, still in negative, but it is a massive improvement on where we were from the low point. And the really huge change, the biggest improvement of all, is how people believe the economy will fare over the next 12 months. People of the UK believe the economy will fare over the next 12 months. Look at this. And that's not even the lowest point. The lowest point is chopped off by two months. It's gone from minus 60 and we're right up here to minus 20. So even though we are officially in a recession, a shallow recession, we're officially in a recession in the UK, you can see that the public believe that the economy is improving. And if inflation continues to fall as is forecast, that can only get better. And I certainly believe that we will see these climb up to the neutral point through spring. And certainly people's belief in their own uh, personal finances will improve right the way through and break through in spring. This is where we sit with inflation. And don't forget, of course, that in last month's inflation number, I say last month's, January's inflation numbers published last week, we stuck, didn't we? We stuck at 4%. So, th so that's currently where we sit. Uh, this, these ones here show you the numbers. The CPI stuck at 4%. The CPIH also stuck at 4%. So that's the CPI, but with homeowner costs in there. And then the homeowner costs, specifically homeowner costs, excuse me, <coughs> which for some reason, by the way, um, ONS have suddenly decided to change the color of their line from dark blue into red. Not quite sure what the significance of that is. It makes it a little bit easier, easier to, to differentiate, I guess. But look at that. So this rise in homeowner costs through here, very important to us in the house building sector because these are our target audience. You can see that actually took a slight fall in the month. So that's really important. But more important still is this next chart here. This is what I was referring to just now. Do you know I talked about that economist whose name I have beautifully forgotten and it is singly unimportant because I can virtually guarantee you'll have never heard of him anyway. He reckons this difference in between wage inflation and general inflation is going to pull us out of recession much quicker than people think. I drew a big thick black line there through zero. So if you can just imagine, so this at the moment, that blue line there is wage inflation. And you can see that at the moment that sort of sits up there six to seven percent. So there's take home pay inflation and real time inflation. And these are the two blue lines. If you subtract from that inflation, typically the general inflation that a wage earner is subject to, you get this line here, the, the reds and the mauves, which is essentially the real inflation, the inflation that we actually feel because that's subtracting how our income is going up with how prices are going up. And you can see, look at this, where we were, this loop, where we, we were in negative and all the press stories about everybody were about everyone's getting worse off and it's more difficult, confidence is falling and so on and so forth. And look how we've crept up above that line there. And we are now in this net inflation of between one and a half and 2% uh, across the uh, working population. That's very important. And that actually gives fuel to that view from the forgotten 
economist who believes it's going to drag us out of recession. I apologise for getting his name and whoever he is, I hope he's correct. Obviously, I always put up interest rates. We know how the situation is at the moment uh, right now, don't we? We know we're stuck at 5.25%. Uh, it's interesting. We'll look at key dates in a moment or two. I have a sneaking suspicion that's not going to change anytime soon and probably not in much. But you can see where the trend is. You can, so these are on two year, uh, these are two year fixed rates of various different loans to values uh, with the very highest loan to value up here. So this is the 95% loan to value right up here and that's coming in at almost 6%. But it's a rare loan these days. Uh, but the very lowest loan to value down here, uh, which is 60%, um, um, you can see that's now at 4.62. That's the average as well. People are out there are doing better than that. And if we actually just take a 75% loan to value over different terms, this is interesting because two year term, 75% loan to value, about 4.7%. Look at this then, a 10 year term up here is 4.7. The five year, that's the best one currently right now out there, 4.4%. I've got a fascinating little chart to show you in a moment or two about how those interest rates affect massively the proportion of retained income that people have to spend on their housing. Come back to that. Key dates, first of all, these are very important. Diaries out, everybody. Um, well, the first one, of course, is the budget. A couple of weeks' time. Uh, who knows what he's going to do? Will there be an election bribe for, for house hunters and house buyers? I think there will. I think on balance of probability, I think there will. I don't think he'll be able to resist it. It's one last throw of the dice, isn't it, to try and avoid the inevitable mauling that they are going to get at the general election. Certainly, if the two by-elections last week are anything to go by, that's for sure. So uh, that's, uh, that's, that's March 6th. Then uh, for us, in a much more immediate sense, because that election probably is not going to be till a, a lot later in the year, but in a more immediate sense, March the 20th, that'll give us the next inflation figures. The general consensus view is it will probably be around 3.5, 3.4, 3.5%. That'll be very, very good news. And of course, the important thing is the following day, it's the MPC. I'm sorry about the rogues gallery. I know I used that same rogues gallery for this very slide last month. Hey, it's, you know, Mark Carney's day, when uh, this is Andrew Bailey up here, obviously, governor of the Bank of England. When Mark Carney was the Governor of Bank of England, he organised beautiful group shots of everybody sat together, smiling on big, lavish gold chairs and stuff. Um, they need to do a little bit of work on their PR, don't they? Uh, well, one of our team could help them, Joan, perhaps. Um, but anyway, the important thing is they meet the day after the inflation numbers come out. That is going to be hugely important. If those inflation numbers are very, very good, then who knows? Maybe that quarter percent will come off and we'll come down to 5%. Don't forget, even on the last MPC meeting, two of these little rascals here actually voted for interest rates to go up. Well, I would be staggered if that happens, pretty much regardless of what the numbers look like on March the 20th. Um, but if the numbers are very, very good the day before, then there is definitely a chance that that rate might come down to 5%. I think it's 50-50 right now. That's my guess. And then, of course, we've got the general election. And as you'll know from last month, I guessed that it was going to be 28th November. We'll see. Uh, the world's going to change. Uh, there'll be lots of legislation changes. There'll be lots of economic policy changes. So all bets are off in terms of the market next year. Obviously, a lot of macro, global, economic things going on uh, behind the scenes, uh, which you all know only too well about. And 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 the change of government, the almost inevitable change of government coming in the autumn will herald another raft of changes. And we'll leave predictions for 2025 until we have a little bit of a clearer line on what they're going to be. So let's take a quick trot then through our favorite pieces of data. Uh, the morning again is running away with us that 30 minutes, which seems to be so, so much time at the start, evaporates in moments, doesn't it? My favorite chart, you know this chart, I love this chart. This is the property mark, the chart they used to do and then stop doing. Now I do it for them because I love it so much. And it's the growing gray, isn't it? The gray, the gray that shows that a deal's done below asking price. You'll all remember, deal's done below asking price, 
Deals done in orange at asking price and still extraordinarily in the blue there, deals done above asking price. And that lovely chart, which actually dates all the way back to January 2022, you've got two years worth of, of market on there showing you where the peak of the market was April, May 2022 uh, and how that went through transition. In my view, we're going to start seeing this coming back the other way and we're going to start to see the market transition. This will look very different by the time that we get to the end of 2024. The, so all I've done here is just taken those uh, orange and blue lines and amalgamated them to show you how that market has moved. It's a great illustration of showing you, forget average prices and all the rest of it. You know, the bottom line is the real world that we experience and our sales teams experience uh, week in, week out in sales offices up and down the country is that there. That's what they're facing, what they're going with. And of course, this is the big issue, isn't it? It's all about volumes. And volumes has been the real killer over the last 18 months, that massive reduction. Probably on the new home side, 25%, 25% reduction in volumes, little bit of a recovery, little bit of recovery there. So the December numbers were just, they just crept over 50,000, but nothing like the, you know, if you look back at all the last Decembers and believe you me, I have, because I'm a sad Muppet, the sort of thing I do in my spare time, I can tell you that Decembers over the last 10 years, uh, COVID aside, of course, 67, 69,000, 66,000, 68,000, and they naturally result February, March sales, each of those months in about 100,000 sales. Uh, here we are down at 50. So you have to assume that, that the lower volumes are going to stay with us through January, February. Uh, and, and, and I think it will be March, April before we see ourselves coming out the other side of those volumes. But I showed you this slide last month, kept it in again really briefly to show how the proportion of cash buyers has actually, or that not just the proportion, the proportion has grown exponentially, but the actual physical raw number of cash buyers has actually been increasing since 2022. That's important for everybody when they're thinking about asking prices because a much higher proportion of cash buyers, and what do cash buyers want? They want a deal, don't they? Because they're in a strong position. We just need to keep that in our head. Quick trot through the, the classic uh, stats. Here's the nationwide. This is now three weeks old. So um, we'll see what happens for their February numbers next week. But you can see in January, 0.7% uh, uplift. So the annual change is virtually flat at 0. minus 0.2%. This is what I was telling you about just now. So I've been putting in the, the uh, income multiples. Uh, that, that, that is that classic night follows day thing because we know in the end that it has to come back to about four and a half times income for the market to be steady as we would expect it to be. And look, this is how things have gone over the last few years from back all the way to 1985. This is the percentage of take home pay that your average mortgage uh, holder has to pay uh, to, to buy their property. Look at this. So here's the long run average. My take is that line can never, it's like a magnet that can never stay too far away from that average. It will always come back there like a pendulum swinging. Look at this, look. So currently here's a mortgage, average mortgage rate around five and a bit percent. We're up well above this average, aren't we? Look, if the mortgage rate was 4%, we'd be there. If it was 3%, we'd be there. We are heading in that general direction as I absolutely forecast. Equilibrium will return to the UK property market. This, by the way, is the Bank of England's forecast on where interest rates will end up. This was their forecast back in late August that said in five years time, we'd be around here. They changed it in late November to say we'd be around here. And this is the current five year forecast on where they believe interest rates will be 3.3%. Hey, remember that slide? So this is where we'll be. For me, it just looks like equilibrium is returning to the market. Here's the Halifax again, that's the end of January. Don't want to spend too much time dwelling on that. But the important thing is they've got annual change at plus 2.5%. I still have some, I have some issues with that 
or the way that algorithm works. Uh, these were yesterday's right move numbers. I guess you've probably all already seen these, um, but they're literally, they're 24 hours old. And you can see that in February, there was actually a monthly little uptick at plus 0.9%, uh, which means for the first time since last July, the annual numbers on right move asking price index is in positive, plus 0.1%. Don't forget that that index is only based on new instructions coming onto the website and it's asking prices. No one has sold their property at those prices and there almost certainly won't. But quite interestingly, there was a 16% increase in sales agreed in those January numbers. That really is very important to us. I've circled here the second steppers, the larger properties in, in terms of how they're performing against the overall market. Because last month that was minus 2%. Look at that, minus 0.8% over the year. Again, a little bit of confidence coming back with people and their asking prices. Here's Zoopla for you, minus 0.8% across the year. Um, interestingly, year on year change in buyer demand is up 12%. Percentage of sales agreed uh, at prices more than 10% of the asking price though, 21% is still a buyer's market. That's what Richard Donald told us. And I, I'm even gonna squeeze into this 30 minutes a couple of RICS slides. Um, why? Well, because they're quite extraordinary. We know how the RIS are very, very uh, pessimistic generally uh, with their outlook on life. These are the newly agreed sales. I call these the canary slides because there are no better slides in this entire deck for forecasting where the market is going to be in three months time. Look at this. So we've still got West Midlands down here and we've still got the North and Yorkshire and Humberside still in negative, but on newly agreed sales over the past month, a lot of positive thinking and increase on the previous month. And look at this new vendor instructions. The market is coming to life. Uh, and that means, those new vendor instructions mean that volumes will return. And look at this, I, I, I won't take you all through the regional one, but with West Midlands aside, you've got all of the, the uh, regions thinking over the next three months, they'll see an uptick in volume. And look, here's the uh, position over the next three months. The Azure dotted line there is over the next 12 months. All the agents are starting to think we're going to see higher volumes over the next 12 months. And finally, with the RICS size, they even believe, even the surveyors believe, prices are going to be higher in 12 months time. Look, it's just crept over the line there. They don't believe they're going to be higher in three months time, but they do believe they're going to be higher in 12 months time. Uh, I, you know, I, I've rushed through those RICS slides, but believe you me, they really are important. So where does that leave us then? Uh, values and volumes for uh, this year. This was April 2023. I always put that up there because it gives you a good idea of how things have moved. Have a little look and see how that has changed now with everything that's happened. Here's consumer confidence recovering unbelievably and moving into a neutral position. Pretty much everything else is aligning on that neutral line, that low impact, a neutral effect line. It's almost, it's, you remember when I talked about that caution that there is out there, it's almost like this wait and see thing, but the steadier things are, um, and, and that's why the inflation number coming out on March 20 is so very important because that sends such a signal to these potential buyers about all sorts of things, interest rates and so on and so forth. Uh, the more steady that is, well then, eventually that market then recovers. But of course, the developers have it in their power to offer fixed rate deals that takes all that doubt away. And I am quite sure that the smarter and sharper ones uh, amongst you are already talking with your IFAs to do that very thing. And so, where do I see the year? Again, if you go back, it's on YouTube, you can have a look. I have changed this slightly. Uh, and and the, bit, the, the, the most significant change is I actually had, I did have a spring uptick, but not to that extent. And I also had a lower February, slightly lower March, and it was April before it came into positive. I've changed my mind, I've changed my mind. And I think that I look at the consumer confidence numbers, I look at the way things are going, I look at the performance for the developers up and down the country uh, on a weekly basis. 
And I think that there is, I said to you last time round that there was going to be a good spring market. And I said, get active in February, get aggressive in February because there's opportunity out there. And I really do hope you took that advice because you can see it's going to happen. Uh, and there is no question about that. I still do believe we've got tricky times ahead. And I think that summer is going to be difficult, but don't be fooled by the extent of the fall of those blocks. This one down here is literally only coming down to 1.8, minus 1.8%. These are not huge, massive falls. I think this is what we've got through the year. And I think the election, which is almost certainly going to happen around this sort of time, will flatten that market out and will reduce volumes and will actually br bring the result down here that I'm showing. At the end of the year, December 2024, we end up with prices, the nationwide average price at exactly the same place that it was in December 2023. There you go. That's my take on the whole thing. And so in summary then, um, I've adjusted my view, I've, but I haven't adjusted the, my take on how it's going to end up. I still believe that average prices, real genuine sold prices, will be roughly at the end of 2024 where they are now at the end of 2023. Uh, I'm, I'm, I still feel that way. The thing is, there are an awful lot of things going on in the background. So uh, with all the political things that are going on as well, election and what have you, we need to keep a close eye on that. Uh, and I'm certainly not too proud to come back and say we can adjust that one way or another. But right now, I think that's where we are. Pr please be careful with your pricing. It still matters so much. Getting those initial asking prices right is so much better. A little bit of early pain um, and a, a little bit of preparedness to take a slightly lower margin, really important because going back afterwards, you have to go beyond that point if you're cutting uh, and that make, does make life difficult. I, you know, for me, take advantage of this spring market uh, and get a bit aggressing, aggressive and get out there uh, and, and get rid of um, some uh, inventory. Monthly volumes are improving. New home share is improving too. And I am delighted to see that. So everybody doing a great job out there. Volumes are going to come under pressure, I think, prior to the election. I've told, we talked about that last month. We'll keep an eye on that and we'll maybe do another election market cast uh, as we get closer to it. We have a little bit more certainty on dates and so on. Critical factors, though, February inflation data, which comes out on the 20th of March, MPC meeting on the 21st of March. That's going to do a massive amount to shape the rest of this year. That's not bad, is it? 31 and a half minutes. Uh, next market cast. I hope you got something out of that. Uh, you know, I think it's a really interesting market. I think there's great opportunities out there as we head into spring. Get it in your diary. Thursday, uh, sorry, Tuesday, the 19th of March. We will be back for another ram, bam, shuffling, buckling, swashbuckling. Where did that come from? 30 minutes. I'll see you then.